Hello, Ben here with Studio on the Lake. So I put up some boring stuff here lately as we're putting things together. So here's a little hummingbird that I was working on and uh, I'll give it to you in a couple of videos and kind of do it as uh, you can follow along. And uh, pretty much one side of him's done. I only had one glass eye, but uh, hey, enjoy the ride here. So here's two pieces of basswood. They're uh, little pieces that came off the end. That's a good reason to show you to save all your little scrap pieces because you can always make something uh, small out of it. So I'm taking an old hummingbird that I have uh, here and uh, I pulled his beak out. I had him stuck in a, a group of about six or eight so I pulled him off. So I mark out the, the wing and I mark out the body of this guy and I've been making pretty much this same style for many many years. No bandsaw and no word on when it's coming so here we go. Uh, the old school way and this has got a pretty fine blade in it it's quite painful to watch so I zoomed ahead a little bit on that and uh, this will probably be three videos maybe four as we go along so to get rid of a lot of the extra wood I just went ahead and used the splitting property of wood it's obviously a little bit too thick so rubber hammer and a chisel and a block of wood and split it so that uh, it's about the right width. And sometimes this goes bad if you're not paying attention to the grain. So now a couple different ways to get this down. This would have been quick if I'd taken to the bandsaw or the scroll saw. I actually do have an old scroll saw. A scroll saw I should get out and uh, if that bandsaw doesn't get here. But through a combination of knife work, chisel work, and voila the new uh, power carver that is an Oz Elite uh, I like it lots of torque seems to be real handy and I've got a 332nd collet in it and then uh, the Ram 1 uh, iCube that uh, you saw in the review if you're a subscriber if you're not uh, uh, it's something you might be interested in, feel free to subscribe that helps the channel out and uh, go back and check out. There's probably 150, 175 videos on there, some better than others. So right now I'm still doing the hard part, which is getting the blank down uh, to size. And basically this is a two-dimensional piece. Well, three-dimensional, but this uh, two-dimensional from the front and then uh, the width. And that would be the blank, and that would already be done about uh, half an hour ago. Uh, as would this so switching back and forth power carver knife that's a Ramelson knife uh, it is finally sharp I got the, uh, the new sharpening equipment in or my old standard which are diamond uh, stones or slicks they're kind of uh, interesting shapes there for uh, they got ch you can do chisels on them all kinds of stuff because they're concave and go all different directions so uh, always marking out your reference lines. This body on this one, I kind of wanted him to twist around. And uh, if you watch a hummingbird at a feeder, they never fly straight. If you're a beginner at, at carving, the hardest thing for you to do is to get some life into your carving. And you can get life into it by changing the pose and giving it a little bit of motion. A head tilted to the side, uh, one wing not symmetrical necessarily with the other wing, the body turned off to the side and the head, you, you get the idea. So, still working on the blank, uh, but I've got it pretty close now, so now I'm starting to round it over a little bit. And I, the reason those center lines are in there is to keep me away from uh, crossing over and getting into the other side where I don't really want to. So here I'm going to thin the neck down just a tad. So a little, a little bit more on the shaping and now it's time to get down into the head. And the head uh, is what makes him come alive. So that's a uh, cuts all gold. I do have the cuts all, um, not the extremes 
uh, but the coarse ones and they're silver as opposed to gold and then, uh, of course Jordy Johnson uses cuts all extremes I think uh, Rob over at Just Carve Rob does the same thing uh, I think this uh, hand piece would be able to handle the extreme although I'm not going to run it in there uh, based on the price of this thing there's no sense in trying to burn it up uh, right away let's see if we can get 10 or 15 years of use out of it first and I really don't have any need to, for the, the extremes. This has got really good torque, and I'm running uh, uh, a lot of the video at two times the speed, the stuff that you don't just see, and then uh, like a little section right here, I'll run at half speed. So you can see that he's starting to look like a, a hummingbird. And uh, when I turn him around like this, uh, when I'm carving, I'm constantly turning this piece around, and the subscribers know, know that. You can see him start to come out of there. You could almost uh, get a dolphin out of that too. I think maybe so it's time to, to work on his tail and I don't want his tail to be static uh, in line I want it to be kind of curved around and that's why I left that huge chunk of wood uh, on the bottom there now that I have the the body kind of twisted the head laid out I can go ahead and, and take a lot of this material away from uh, the tail Once again, that's a gold, uh, and uh, I believe that that's an eighth inch collet, and that's in the ram hand piece. I'd have to see more of the hand piece for that, but uh, uh, you can see the setup I've got on the right behind there in another video. I've got the, the dual burner setting on the right hand side on a shelf to the right side of my chair there. It's a swivel rocker chair. Um, I might change that out. My daughter said she had a, a better chair. I really liked the black one that I lost in the fire. Uh, it was ancient and it uh, had two befores, a two before platform underneath because it would tend to fall over. So I modified it, but uh, we lost that in the fire. And uh, I'm not taking the tail all the way down because I'm, I want to leave a little bit of meat on it for when I, when I get ready to start doing the feathers on this. You're going to get a lot of burning in this for those of you that are following along and quite a few of you are trying to follow the little birds and, and carve them and uh, I'd, I'd love to see uh, uh, what you're doing there and uh, you can send that to me at studio on the lake 88 at gmail.com so just studio on the lake the, the numbers 88 because apparently there's a ton of studio on the lakes and uh, I'd, I'd like to see what you're doing I'm not a, a very good critic. I don't like critics. Um, critics are typically the people that can't do it, can't do something, and uh, they feel that they need to uh, tell other people what they did wrong. Uh, I do this for fun uh, and happen to have been lucky and be able to sell a little bit of this stuff. Um, and even luckier yet that you guys are bothering to watch it uh, on YouTube. And I'm just glad to share how I'm doing it and how it's done uh, for those of you that are interested. And so, uh, many of you probably have no intention of ever carving anything. They just like to watch uh, the thing as it progresses. And uh, I'm certainly that way on a lot of things. I'll get mesmerized by something on YouTube and uh, spend several hours watching uh, the stuff that goes on. So we're still working the body down. I, I'm about ready to put a, a line on the side so I've got four lines uh, in, in the two dimensions or three dimensions and, and, and I don't mess him up. Now I'm still working, working the head down a little bit. These are again not uh, anatomically correct. If you were to do a hummingbird and I have from a strict pattern that was pulled off uh, of a picture They'd look, they wouldn't quite look right uh, for some reason. When you, you get all the details correct without seeing the splendor of the whole thing, uh, they don't look quite right. And I've talked about this before. So, uh, and the second thing is I, I don't want to paint this. I want to leave it burned and uh, let the burning uh, speak for itself. It's kind of a thing that I do. And of, of course, you're welcome to copy that anything that I do. I didn't come up with any original ideas on any of this stuff. I look at stuff that other people have done. Uh, I look at things that they're doing 
and uh, then I, I give it a shot. I could take uh, a pattern uh, on the chainsaw stuff. I, I bought a chainsaw book to look at some bears. So there's the uh, character as he's going around in slow motion, and you can certainly tell that it's going to be a hummingbird. If you maybe not, but. Uh, I think it looks like a hummingbird and he's all twisted around. But anyway, I, I'm going to copy some of the chainsaw bears in there and, and I'm not worried about that on the patterns in there because I can't duplicate them or I'm not even going to try. I'm going to use them as a, a, a reference guide and a starting point and, and continue on. So uh, most of my references I pull down from the web since it's available in the old days before the web. And, and yes, I was around in the old days before we had the web. Um, but I would uh, take a reference photo and, uh, and, and build a pattern off of it and, and then not necessarily try to copy it because I knew I couldn't. And uh, it would turn out kind of unique and that's what art is all about, right? So I thought I would do these. I've got a couple more videos out there. Um, there's the one that I'm using as a reference as a pattern. Uh, I don't know when that one was made, but they're pretty much the same style that I, I like to do. Uh, that one has a little less burning. It was probably done fairly rapidly for something. I don't know. But uh, this one I'm going to take you painfully all the way through. I did do a hummingbird video, uh, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, and it was well received. Uh, so I, I thought rather than, than bore you with a lot of the stuff that I'm getting in and that sort of thing, I'd show you that. But I do have a couple more videos uh, to edit while I'm down here this week in Iowa. And uh, one of them is repairing a uh, spirit man who was in the fire and for some reason solder, uh, I think solder, uh, got dripped down onto him and uh, it embedded in the lines. And I'll show you that's kind of interesting. So I go through and, and carve that stuff out. And, uh, and and salvage him and, and get him back in, in uh, shape so that he can go down to the gallery. And, and then another one that I'm doing was uh, uh, trying out my new DeWalt and, and this new power carver was uh, um, an owl on top of a, on a, a piece of cottonwood bark. And then under that, I put an old man spirit face in there. And I, I really like how that turned out. You'll see that video as well as a, a couple more of these. I don't have the finished video on this, but I've got probably two videos taking him to where you see him in the beginning of this video. And, and I'm doing it as a teaching video, so it's painfully long and uh, that sort of thing. So if that's not your thing, you can skip ahead. Now, uh, what I'm doing right now is I, that is the, uh, um, Oz Elite, the, the more expensive of the, of the power cars. I'm worried about the dust on the end of that. That has a little uh, opening that actually goes back into the handpiece. So I'm thinking this one might be more susceptible to dust and I might need to get a couple of those little things to go on the other side of the burr that I would advertise with the RAM. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, this thing is just smooth as can be. It's quiet and it's, it's perfectly smooth. And I guess that's what happens when you when you pay another three or four hundred dollars, you, you get what uh, you pay for, as is with most, tool, most tools. Jordy's talked about that. You get what you pay for in tools. I've always been a, a, a proponent of that, uh, but there is a breaking point where you don't need to get ludicrous. So I got a couple more videos coming for you. You got this guy, and uh, I should have. I'm flying nights down here, so I've got a better part of the day. Especially if I don't fly at night, I get to sleep all night. We call that EMS, earn money sleeping. And uh, I get have time to do uh, the editing on a lot of these videos and get them out. So I'm working the head down. In the next video, I only put one eye in because I only have one eye. Uh, I've got an order of eyes coming from Tohican Glass Eyes. But as usual, everything's slower with the post-COVID. I'm going to call it post-COVID because people seem to have given up on it. Uh, but the bandsaws back ordered COVID. Uh, a lot of the stuff I was looking for was hard to find. Uh, you would think that the whole place just shut down. I, I, don't, I don't know. I went to work and I noticed other people were working. So it, it's a, kind of amazing to me that uh, everything's kind of back ordered. The price of lumber is up 400%. And those are the characters that I would think that uh, wouldn't care about the COVID. 
uh, knuckleheads that are out in the woods and doing logging are typically your uh, stouter breed of folks and uh, don't go in for this sissy stuff. Not that, not that the COVID was sissy stuff, but uh, they, you know what I mean. Uh, intention there not to offend anyone. So that, uh, that hand piece um, has a ruby bit in it. I showed uh, in another video the ruby bits. Uh, probably one of my favorites. This is the flame, the larger flame, and then I run a smaller flame also. So we're getting ready to come up to the end of this video where I decided to cut this one. Uh, here's a, a little preview going ahead. That's burning the feathers in. You can see I've got the eye set in. The beak is going to be a piece of wire or a nail. I haven't decided, just like I do on all of them, because if it's wood, it tends to break off. So I'll see you on the next one. i got a couple more videos coming out, so like, subscribe, and uh, by all means, leave me a comment. Hey, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.